made you want to ask that question? Well, there is a question that I'd like to ask. Uh huh. What's that? Um, I heard y'all letting. Uh, I heard y'all letting. Um, Candace Owens in. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> Candace Owens was on the Breakfast Club the other day. That was the most quiet I've seen Jess hilarious. She was out of her league. <laughs> out of her league. This is Batman talking. <laughs> Listen, I try my best to keep my mouth up because I don't I don't want to go in those spaces. Because she didn't have nothing but to say. But you can elaborate though. Because she ain't had nothing to say. I'm like, girl, she is out of her realm. See, this is why I said they should have had somebody who was also versed in politics on the show correct and even if they had her there working they should have also had somebody piped in what's the woman's name Taslin or something Teslin she te, she usually comes in they should have had Joy Ann Reed come in Angela Rye should have come in um uh somebody said somebody oh Roland Martin anybody who you know can speak in clear, salient sentences. B Mac Attack said cogently. Said Candace would have ate her up. That's why. That's why she 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 sat quietly. She sat quiet. Yeah. She sat quietly. She had nothing to say. Look, and then when she did ask a question, Candy K asked you a question, Craig. Can we put Candy's case oh, question up there? Hold on. The comments are coming in. Hold on. Where is it at? All right, this one. Well, you keep skipping it, no, Mo. Are you calling her or something? I saw. There you go. Are you calling her? Are you? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying she couldn't really articulate. I think she was out of her realm, out of her comfort zone. Well, what would be her comfort zone, Craig? Nigga talk. <laughs> The man. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Right, all right. I don't have anything to she, say. She she was out of her realm right there. Like so, like she didn't know she didn't know what to do with that. She didn't even know how the government works. <laughs> well let's talk well let's you talk about it. Let's see if you were sitting in that seat. Began. Well, I just feel like <laughs> Charlemagne, he was very I really feel like they didn't interview her. I really felt like she got there and she talked and she spoke about what she wanted to talk about. She spoke about how she didn't uh, vote for Trump in the first round, but she is going to vote for him this time. She was impressed after he did like these different town halls and he was quoting these statistics. If I was there, I would have said, well, what statistics are those that were actually accurate? Because oftentimes when he did these rallies, we would see on CNN or other think, think pieces where they were they were questioning the statistics or they, they would share, they would say oh this isn't accurate he said this but this is actually what happened so and then she talked about how biden and his family are criminals okay so are you not paying attention to what's going on with trump right now because Letitia jane is her last name james who the district attorney up there in new york uh -huh. you know starting tomorrow he got she's starting to seize his properties trump's properties so, Candace, if you're saying that Biden is a, is a criminal, what are you saying about Trump? Right. Now, there were some things that she did speak on that I definitely, um, you know, agreed with. Uh, for example, she talked about Lyndon B. Johnson being a racist. And he was. But a lot of black folks don't really count him or see him for who he was because he employed this whole idea of welfare and stuff like that but he was also the one that said the man cannot be in the house and that was kind of the beginning of the breakdown of the black family because there were women who had children who were like oh no no you can't live here you know like if you ever saw claudine the movie claudine where she had children but the father could even when she started dating james earl jones which was not the father of her children mm -hmm. he could not be in the space he could not be in the apartment they would come in look around your apartment, make sure there was no shaving cream or no men's clothes. And so that was kind of like the beginning of the breakdown of the black family. Um, 
So she spoke about things and, you know, but I don't know. I just, she just can't be trusted. But she did say that when they, when they did that town hall, it was her, T.I., and a bunch of hip hop people. Do y'all remember seeing that? I tend to go the other way when I see her. She did. That was a couple years ago. And she talked about how she was shocked that T.I. got on the stage and pretended like he didn't even know who she was when they had had plenty of conversations before, off air, on the phone. And she talked about how her views and T.I.'s views are very similar, but he pretends to be different out in front of the people. She talked about Fonnie, Fonnie Willis down here in Atlanta who's bringing charges against Trump. She said that she was very, basically she said she was very sister girl. She was almost like a reality star on there. And, but no, I think, I think Fonnie went in there locked and loaded because it's like these white people are trying to say that I was commingling funds and misappropriating funds and that's not what happened. And so that's why they are allowing her to continue with her case against Trump. But I don't know, I just feel like they sat there, they didn't say anything, they didn't really push, because I don't think they really wanted a debate with her, because she's a hell of a debater. But she won't go on shit like with Roland Martin, and she won't go up against people. They needed somebody else there that could really ask her pointed questions. None of them know enough about government to really you know, speak to her. So she, they basically just gave her a platform. And then she talked about how this guy, um, Shapiro, couldn't terminate her, and the next day the bitch was fired. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I got something for her. Since you want to get over there <laughs> and get, a, you want to go around them colors and think that you want right, to, and you want to. Now you was all right when you. Now you want to go over there and tell those colors. I'm gonna show you, nigga, that they can say whatever they want to say about us Jewish folks. I'm, 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 a, I'm gonna show you I'm something. I'm gonna fix that mailbox. You nigga, bitch. You nigga, bitch. Okay. So we know it done been messed with. And been <laughs> brought that hammer down on her ass like, can't close that case. Yes, indeed. But she did say that she had attraction to white um, Asian men for a long time, and because they did ask her if she had ever um, dated black guys and you know that kind of thing. But my thing is too, they were so I just felt like it was just a, a coonery type thing on the part of the breakfast, uh, the oatmeal club, because. They asked her, they were asking her different questions to just see how black she is or how, I guess, you know, how, how, how black she is or how in the know she is. So she ended up singing the, the theme song to the Fresh Prince. What? Wait a minute. Because they were like, so, See, Craig, I didn't watch it. Right. So Jess Hilarious was like, so how many fights did Will Smith get into before his mother moved? Oh, so she was in her lane there. Yeah. Right, right. That was the only time she really spoke. I, I think Claudia would have ate her up. A lot of people were saying that. I, I think Claudia about. would have definitely, definitely ate her up and would have definitely challenged her mm -hmm. in, a, in a conversation. I think that that would have been, you know. Now, see, I don't know Claudia on in that level in terms of knowing if she knows politics like that. For me, and, and a lot of people, because I talked about this on my live, and a lot of people were saying, Claudia could have did it. Claudia could have done it. And maybe she could have. I was looking forward to... Because, see, I think if Claudia would have been there, she probably would have looked at Claudia as, oh, you're just a reality TV girl. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like I would have wanted somebody who does this shit, who does politics, who, do, who, who is an actual political Somebody pundit. said Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals yes. would have been good. I think Amanda Seals could have well, been good. Well, let's talk about Amanda Seals not being in the black spaces as she should be. She speaks openly about things, black things, black politics, and she talks about stuff in general. She's real heavy on this Palestine stuff, and she's saying that she's not invited in black spaces. The Essence Awards, Black Girls Rocks, they've never acknowledged her. Essence Festival, they talk about all the, You have that um, uh, grab, Mo, yeah. of that Essence article with her? Wait, you said um, the grab of that Amanda Essence. Seals. Yeah. But you can pause on that. What I told you, more and just do this okay. over here. But she, she, you know, she was saying that she's not invited into spaces. But yet they have Candace Owens up on the Breakfast Club because it's not so much about being likable. Because people will say, "Oh, well, Amanda's not likable. Amanda's not likable. You know, she, you know, she's she's just too too much. She's so extra. She's so over the top." But it's not about likability because people like a Candace Owens isn't likable, but because they bring in sponsorship dollars or whatever, 
black people will overlook that shit. They'll shuck and jive right. and coon for somebody like her. Tamika Mallory was saying the same thing. I actually watched it live. Tamika Mallory is um, is a is a uh, activist as well. She she's Until Freedom is her organization. It's called Until Freedom. So like a lot of times when uh, people were being like Breonna Taylor, she was really at the forefront of that Breonna Taylor thing. Um, she was out there, you know, trying to get the officers arrested. Like she's always at a lot of these different things. But that's the other thing. Candace Owens tried to uh, say something about. Um, the girl who founded uh, Black Lives Matter, who was a queer woman as well. And she talked about how she has all these different houses and she misappropriated the money from Black Lives Matter. Did she not? Now, I don't know. Now, I don't know if that lady misappropriated, per, misappropriated the money or not. That's it. That's, that's but we'll do it afterwards. But. That's what they were saying. Um. And just like how they, how they brought Nikki, uh, Nikki Haley on The Breakfast Club and didn't ask her very pointed questions. It's like they don't really know enough about politics to really drill them. Like, that's not your bailiwick. You need to have somebody come in and, you well, know, who really knows that shit. Well, they yeah. drill, what you call it, uh, the Arab guy? Um, uh, the guy that was running for uh, president? Vice president. Um, he, 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 yeah, I can't think of his name. Yeah, yeah. And Candace Owens said she actually wanted him to, um, uh, she was actually pushing for him yeah. to, um, to, to win. But of course, he got pushed out. Who else in here? Uh, but here's the thing about Amanda. Uh huh. I, uh, Amanda, I love Amanda mm -hmm. because Amanda is all inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda and I have lots of private time, lots of private conversations or whatever. And I do feel that, you know, I, I feel that she's, I feel that she's misunderstood for one. Mm -hmm. And then for two, I feel that she is st strong. Like yeah. she's very st strong. Yeah. And people don't, people are not receiving to strong women. So here's, here, here's what I, I, I was thinking too when we were talking about putting this on here. The way that, so what a lot of people have said about Amanda Seals is that it's the way that she delivers it. Um, you know, she's so aggressive and you know, it's, it's, it's all about the way that you give the message. And I just feel like even when it comes to me and the queers, the black gays, we got to get to that too, the gym. Yes. Before I leave here. But like when I'm very passionate, because like when I sit down to write and create anything that I do, I know I get over and I cut up and all that stuff. But when I sit down to write and create anything, I have black people in mind. Now, the work is for everybody, but it is for black and brown people. And so I'm very passionate about it. Like I love my people. And I just think that we have a responsibility to be sweeter and kinder to each other mm -hmm. because the world treats us like shit, gives us shit, right? So I think, excuse me, as individuals, we have to be sweeter and kinder to each other, support each other's businesses, lift each other whenever we can. Now, again, before y'all get in these comments, I know I let Miss Netta have it and Billy Porter the other week, but listen, this is a satirical show. Now, if you can't separate that from what I'm saying, then God be with you. But, <laughs> but I think that we have a responsibility to be sweeter and kinder to each other. And so when I'm talking about things, I'm very passionate. It's not me being judgmental. It's not me trying to be elitist. I'm passionate about it. And it's like, it doesn't matter how you give the message. What is the intention behind the message? And I think her intention is there. And I think people want you to be soft and pink. And it's like, same thing with Iyala Van Zandt. When she was on Fix My Life, people were like, oh, she's so aggressive. And that ain't how you, then when that lady went off the air, oh, we miss you, auntie. We need you back. We need it like that. That's how they need it. So it's like, <laughs> which way do you want it? Well, I know her personally, and I have mm -hmm. spent lots of personal time with her, and, and I know that she is definitely an ally. I know she definitely stands in the pain for what is right. I know mm -hmm. that she's not 
gonna always be politically correct with with everything that she says mm -hmm. and she's definitely passionate about the stuff you know and again when we is is he outside oh leonard yeah and again when we look at what they post on the blogs yeah they same way they do me yeah they take fragments and pieces like i don't have anything else going on and when i have a thought about something that's going on in the world They'll take that and they'll put that like, oh, well, this all I do is it's because I'm trying mm -hmm. to gain clout. Mm -hmm. Or they don't post it at all. No, no, no. They don't post anything mm -hmm. that anything that I have going on in my life. Mm -hmm. the anything. The positive. They don't post anything that's that. They don't post anything that goes on in my life. Hold with. God, I just wanted to see. <laughs> you will. They don't post anything that I have going on in my life. Nothing. Right. But the moment that I have any any disagreement with anything of, about, or I feel like something like this, like this, like the other day when it, when that trans, that white trans, per, white trans identified person, mm -hmm. the story came out about them. Being in the gym, being in no, the locker room, no killing a girl. This just came out, yo. Oh, I don't know that story, child. This came out. I wanted to say something so bad, but I stayed away. Yeah, yeah. Because I know how they'll take that, and then that'll be trending for weeks. Mm -hmm. And like, this is all I do. Like, all I do is sit in, and, mm -hmm. and Amanda does a whole bunch of other 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 stuff besides. But she, just like everybody else, has their platform. Yeah, speaks out about things. That they're passionate about. That's right. Communities that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And so because they do these things, because you do these things, the blogs take these pieces and then they 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 paste it and it becomes like because they've got this narrative, oh TS Masters don't like black women. And because it's the way they shape the narrative about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And they always say, Well, Master, why do you respond to stuff? No, I got it. I get ahead of these things because if I don't say nothing, ain't nobody saying shit for me. Right, right. Yeah. And so I think that that's the issue with 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 the stuff with Amanda. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they like she has a lot of stuff going on, and they'll take pieces of what she got, like when she she's just having a blurb out about what's going on in Israel and Palestine or she'll have a blurb of what's going on with Sean King and this and the other mm -hmm. then it's just like Amanda Seals versus Sean King mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just like bro that's not what was going on I just had a thought right I just put a tweet out mm -hmm. and 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 then they say oh well yeah sensationalized that that's that's it right there mm -hmm. that that's the term right there it's sensationalized that and, is correct and then also what what I gathered from what Amanda was saying too is when she's shown up at different gigs, whether it's a, a hosting thing or whatever it is, and the things aren't in place the way that it, per the agreement, and she says something to him, well, that's a part of the agreement. Like, what's going on here? Oh, she, she, you're being difficult. Well, we see, it's like that well, nigga business that sometimes happens. We had a, we had a, I love my sister. Mm -hmm. But she was on their ass. She was on the air so hard that I I clutched my pearls and I went in my room. We were booked together in D in um, what was that place in DC? Uh -huh. She she was tearing them up. I don't know what they did to her or how they made her feel, mm -hmm. but she let it be known when when I walked in the door, they they looked at me and they was just like, <gasps> I was like, what y'all didn't do? Right. It's something that y'all didn't do because sometimes y'all be so you know hell bent on treating people a certain way there are some people that come in and it needs to be the exact down to the dot i mean if it's in writing she had tore them up so bad whatever i don't know what happened i don't know if there was i don't know right all i know is that, that they 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 were looking at me like oh my god and she pulled me to the side and like bitch i don't play with these motherfucking people sister uh-huh i said oh god Right. Now we went out there and we delivered a great thing. Like right. we did a we 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 delivered mm -hmm. what we were supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? But see, sometimes when you're in business with other black people, they think, "Oh, you, you understand. We just run it a little late. We'll be with you in a second." No, nah, bitch. <laughs> if I was white, you'd have had this shit together. Right. But because I'm black and you black, you think that you can, you know, have some flexibility. Nicki Minaj said, with "Bitch." My time. Nicki Minaj said, "Bitch, if I would a motherfucking uh, took the pickle juice. I'd have still been here drinking the pickle juice. 
That's what she, bitch. Don't let those people give you, G, you done been with me. G, no, I don't, bitch. Let me tell you something. I'm the sweetest person that you'll ever meet in your fucking life until that business is fucked up. When that business is fucked up, I'm a whole different person. And the gag is, I have five people that you got to communicate with before I speak. Because when I get there, I'm fighting. And that... <laughs> And that's why okay. I have all those people communicating before you even get to me. And but, then I get there and you still got the shit fucked up? Oh, bitch, I'm fighting. Get all my shit and we're getting the fuck out of here. Because these puss ass hoes think that this is how I eat. And you got me fucked up. I was a whore before I was any motherfucking you are I was a whore before I was any motherfucking thing. And if I didn't let no nigga with dicks that was giving me motherfucking money walk all over fucking me, you think I'm finna let some cracker? A what? Some cracker. <laughs> Run over motherfucking me, bitch, please. <laughs> and if you don't think I'll turn VH1, <laughs> ABC, NBC, B B T, the Emmy, if you don't think I'm T.S. Madison, every motherfucking way I go, try me. Okay. 